Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Thriving Adoptees podcast. So today I'm delighted to be joined by John. John saint Union. thank you for making time for us today. Uh, John is uh, an adoptee and he's also uh, a, a, a coach in um, basketball. It's taking you all over the over the world. But um, today, when we were talking about what we might talk about, we, we got back to the nub, really, of, uh, of stuff for us uh, uh, adoptees as identity so why do you think it is the nub what what's it what's the big what's the big deal for us well first of all thank you simon for uh, allowing me to take space and have a conversation with everyone i want everyone to know that i'm an open book i'm no different than anyone else uh maybe have played of a small part in being in in different parts of the world, which have shaped my thinking. Um, but, uh, you know, in, in the space of being an, an adopted child, you know, I think all of us have this question as like, where, where did I come from? Uh, and why was I given away? And I think at different times of your life, you can be okay with what happened in other times of life you can be questioned what happened and maybe it's formulated some of your thoughts along the way and you needed a forum something like this to have conversation pieces with one another to discuss varying viewpoints and and uh and yet share something intimately in common with one another like we do yeah yeah it's all those so, questions, isn't it? And, yeah. yeah, you know, I, I all of us have come from <clears throat> some some part here, right? So, I was given up for adoption at birth, and and was told at around age ten that I was adopted, and and uh, but you know, I didn't know what that meant. I had no idea. No one in my neighborhood was adopted, so I don't, no one knew what what that term meant. And uh, I'm sure the familiarity with everybody that's listening here is that, hey, as we went to school and you maybe you mentioned it to your teacher or so, maybe one teacher was thinking that it was uh, something tragic and maybe it was like, oh, I'm sorry you were adopted, you know, kind of a, could, could, could lead you as a, as a young child to think that maybe something was, was sad wrong bad and if you were fortunate enough maybe you found a teacher that said it was uh, well that's wonderful you know that's congratulations to your to your parents that you have and uplifted your self-esteem but uh, as we've learned to go along our journey you know why why did things happen we take on the traits of our parents whether we like them or not uh, but in the case of being adopted we, we just don't know yeah, I didn't know if there's um, heart disease or those kind of things. Uh, that's a, that's a, those are questions I don't know how the answer to. So the key is how do you find out? Eventually, we all may not all. There are there are many of of, of adoptees that don't wish to know who they're where they came from, and that's their choice. Uh, I made the, the other choice. I wanted to find out. And I didn't have a name and I didn't have a photo and I was given up for adoption in another country. And so I had to make a decision, just like everyone else. You have to decide that you're going to go on this quest. And uh, it's the, it is clearly the Robert Frost poem. It's a, it's a, it's it's two roads converge in the wood. It's really what happens. And you have to decide to take the one, the one that's least traveled. It will it will inevitably have obstacles and things to overcome and negativity and anxiety. You name it. It's all going to come from trying to begin the quest. Um, but I think it takes that 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 type of thinking that what am I going to get out of this? 
an open mind. Yes, I think we all want the end result to know who our mom and dad were, but it's still the journey of discovery that you're going to get. And uh, that's going to enrich your life. If you're fortunate enough to get to the end and finish line and know who they were, fantastic. But yeah. I think from my perspective, it was to go on the journey to discover where I came from. That was intriguing. Yeah. So what did you find? So uh, when I was... 50 years old, I decided to take a DNA test because I kept hearing about how wonderful those were. And, and I just took it and it was remarkable. It was fantastic to, to know of ge geographically where you came from, statistically speaking, the, the numbers of, of, of what your genetics were. Remarkable. So it started the, started that in motion. And I said, you know, I, I'm, I want to go find out. But the hardest part about anything is the first step. What do you do? You know, you who do you contact? You know, so I I learned I had a memory recall of my of my adopted mother telling me that hey, there was uh, someone that she had worked with her boss. And it just triggered something for me to reach out to her, her boss. Now, that gentleman may have been dead. I have no idea. I took a chance. And it took, uh, took a couple of weeks before I heard a reply. And, and the reply was, was wonderful. Of course, I remember your mother. Uh, come on to my house and let's talk about this. And it was Ironically, I was in the same city that he was in that that particular day. Wow. And so I go and I learn an incredible amount of information of how they reached out. Well, it was a Mormon colony in in uh, Chihuahua, Mexico, and I had no idea. I didn't know that was I had no idea that uh, Mormon colonies were there. And uh, so that's that's kind of how naive you can be in the world. You just don't know a lot of things. And uh, this gentleman had lived there himself. And <laughs> remarkable, you know. And uh, well, you know, ultimately he tells me the tale and the story, but you get so overwhelmed with information overload that you really don't retain anything. And so well, the best words he said to me were, you personally have to go yourself to see. It was the best advice he could have given me. I literally took the exact same path that, that my parents had taken to go get me and enter this small town with not knowing anyone. And I know that it was what I do. I will meet somebody. I will befriend them. And I, who doesn't like the search of a puzzle? And at the very least... What I was looking for was the area in which I was born, general understanding, maybe the hospital, but just where I came from, you know, and uh, and I didn't expect much more than that. But it was when I arrived, it was a whole bunch of people willing to help uh, that, uh, you know, heck, we went on the radio. We talked about, you know, that I'm looking for. Now, I want your listeners to understand I was not auditioning for a parent. You know, I'm I'm simply manufacturing this in a delicate manner in which they had to, if someone was going to respond, they had to respond with something that was unique and some somehow, some way. Well, it gets the ball rolling. It's intriguing. Uh, I go and pick up my birth certificate and, and sure enough, I'm from there. And it was, it, it sparked something new. I talked to um, what they call a Pantera is a lady that takes, uh, that's there to help to deliver you in the hospital. And she had done 
millions or not millions. She had done plenty of this. And, and here's that, that double edge conversation I was telling you about, like, she's like, you know, you were adopted. Those are your parents and very straightforward, you know, and it was okay. I get it, you know, but you don't understand where I'm coming from to try to find out where I came from or who they were. It, because it was generally speaking, a young lady, uh, Catholicism in the region, no, no abortion was going to happen, uh, no means to take care of somebody. And so they had this ability to have the Mormons take the child and find a home for them somewhere else. And so I was the beneficiary of that. Um, but it, it wasn't the first, you know, that was just the first time just to come away with this knowledge. The second time was more in depth. Now I have the ball rolling on some things and, uh, more activity, more people just talking about it within this city, uh, and more people to meet. And eventually I meet, uh, a doc, the, possibly there were three doctors in the town at that time. And one of the doctor's uh, sons is, is also a doctor. And I go to visit that gentleman. And I'm sure that he, he has this knowledge. He's, he's quite certain of it, but he doesn't have proof of it. Now, for legal reasons, I don't know. Maybe it's, uh, you know, at the time I thought it was a conspiracy that I kept finding roadblocks everywhere. And and rightfully so, because maybe they're wondering, why is somebody coming back? You know, maybe it's considered child trafficking now because there's no there are no records. So we we continue along and this gentleman decides to, to share with me this story. This doctor shares with me this story. Uh, he says something like 30 years ago, you know, this this uh, young man comes from the United States, doesn't speak any Spanish, has a small picture of his mother and spent goes door to door, knocking on people's door, looking for him. Spends weeks doing this. And, and uh, so I ask, you know, does, does he find her? And he's like, yes, he found her. Now I'm, thoroughly confused Simon because I have DNA I have all these things and this guy with just a small photo spends weeks I don't have weeks so I'm just listening to this story baffled well as we fast forward this story Simon once I get this conclusive evidence that I take a three DNA exams and on my third DNA exam someone comes up that says they're my first cousin, my niece. I make a phone call to this person, gently describe what I'm looking for, not to startle. And, and she says, mate, you need to talk to my father. Great. Well, one day, a couple of weeks later, a phone call comes in and it's a gentleman, her father that says, I believe I'm your brother. Well, tell me why. He proceeds to tell me that 30 years ago, he went across the border. He had a picture. Yeah. He's the guy. You know, so I'm just flabbergasted now. He's the guy that I was told about this story. So I keep asking him. Well, he's like, yes, we found. I found our mother. And after that, I asked, do I have brothers and sisters? And he's like, yes, you have a a sister located over here that was given for adoption within within Mexico, within the community. And you have a, another brother born May 6 in the United States. I don't know where. Maybe these sites, maybe Las Vegas, Phoenix, or Tucson, Arizona. And he gathered up the the, the siblings because there were two more that were left with her at that time and went searching for me. Now, 
they may have found me. They very well could have found me, but the, but the, but I was so not prepared at that time in my life at an early age of, let's say, 20 to 25 years old. And there was no way I was thinking about that. Furthermore, I was already in college. I was playing college basketball. Had they approached me at that time period, I don't know what I would have done. I, I may have just brushed it off and I wasn't prepared to receive it. But at the age of 50, I sure was because yeah. now I was prepared. And all along this journey, I'm sure your listeners are well aware of this, that, you know, you're going to hear negativity. What if they didn't want you? What if, you know, what if you were hearing that you know, no one wants to meet you? I was prepared to hear that. So what? You know, I'm, I had gone through life already. I wasn't fragile, luckily, in my ego to have taken a blow like that. Uh, because I was just simply searching for what I where I came from. It's what I wanted to come away with. But I end up knowing that I have brothers and sisters. I end up knowing that I had, you know, mother and father. And, and while they were not alive at the time, I get a better sense of where I came from. Yeah. And uh, it's a needle in a haystack type of story. And there are roadblocks everywhere. And there are people that just say, you know, you're wasting your time. But it's your time. If this is your quest and your journey, who's to say what's right or wrong? It's up to you to decide what you're looking for. So that's what I did. You know, I went on that quest and wanted to find out for myself. And uh, I feel remarkable because I know, I know for, for a fact where I'm from and I can return back to that community with a tremendous sense of pride. Not, I, I did go back to meet <clears throat> all brothers and sisters, but it was a, uh, like a survivor guilt, you know, they, they were, they were saddened that I was uh, given up for adoption. And and I wanted them to feel that I was the beneficiary. By no means do you have to feel that way. I benefited. and uh, But that's due to the fact that I had two absolute loving parents that made sure that I was adjusted and, and loved uh, unconditionally. Yeah. Wow. You, 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 before we started recording, you said that as a coach, it's your job to inspire people to keep going. Yeah. You know, as a, as a professional basketball coach, I mean, there's, there's, there's all these phases of, of effort and determination. That's, that's what that's called phase one. You want to stay in that phase two is complaining and then the phase three is quitting. You know, I wanted to stay in that first phase of just uh, ener energetic, enthusiastic. and But we, we go through these phases all day long. And as a as a coach, it's my my uh, my ability to recognize when things aren't going well and readjust and encourage. It's. Now I had to apply that to myself. Yeah. We we don't. You mentioned um, uh, thinking a couple of times. You know, you said that where you've been in the world shaped your thinking, um, and you talked about perspective. Um, we we don't hear these sorts of terms in adoptee circles, do we? We don't we don't hear terms like perspective and mindset and stuff like that. It, it's it's all about it's all about the trauma. It's all or it's all about identity. We don't we don't talk a lot. Or, or is that is, that's my take on it? I mean, what what do you think? I, I'm not I'm not uh, in a position probably to judge anybody else's journey, so I can't tell. Um, because that, that is their own relative experience, you know, as, 
as they see it, it's it's uh, akin to someone you know saying saying something to someone, and two two different people can take that that interpretation based on how they feel or how they are at that time. Uh, uh, I I'm um, I, I don't know Simon how how to answer that one properly because I can't. Uh, I have heard other adoptee stories that are um, that are not filled with such uh, joy and enthusiasm like I went to. Um, and as I told you before, I was prepared to hear possibly the negative side of it, that I was not wanted or don't talk to me kind of thing. But I went forth with... Uh, uh experience in life already um but um, yeah I, I i certainly can't judge anyone else's interpretation of it i just know that only my own experience was listen i've lived i've lived in multiple places within the united states and, and around the world and uh you know you just you gain a unique perspective everywhere you get everywhere you go in life somehow some way how they deal with something or how you don't want to deal with the that situation the same way the joy the laughter there are some places in the world that are impoverished they may have an, a tremendous a tremendous view of an ocean or something like that but they but they live in poverty you know it can't it can't feed them so what feeds their soul the joy and the laughter of each other you know, you, you start to gain that appreciation. And, and again, you also understand that some places in the world where family is just tremendously important, uniquely different than what than what I've experienced here re relative to the United States. We talk about family, but it's not really the same way as maybe some other places, you know. So, um, yeah, getting back to your, your, your original... I don't have that expertise to to even begin to to judge someone else's interpretation of how of how their unique road of adoption has been. Um, but I do know this that we look for for bad, but we can also look for the good. The good is also there too. and uh, and I think it is very hard some for all of us, all of us on this platform to go, why? Why was it me? Why was I given away? And and that is sometimes like, boy, we don't understand the entire totality of the circumstances. Because that, I'm a parent now. For me to make a decision to do that, oh God, that's a gut-wrenching, heart, heartbreaking decision for me to have even um, thought about doing. And I so that's how I look back and go, it must have been just a tremendous decision. Maybe not. Maybe it wasn't. But it's how I choose to view it. So I, I had these, um, as I mentioned before, I'd, I'd have, I've had a lot of business coaching and um, I... Uh, I heard I heard this read this book um that was and it was called Questions of the Answer. Questions of the Answer, right? And it uh it, it kind of it must have landed on me. Um we we spent a lot of money with the guy who wrote it and he didn't really help more than the book had done that. Um like when when I was thinking so my my trauma came, my questions came a lot later. And it, it well, yeah, they came a lot later in life. But my, and it wasn't a question. It was a, a, an outright statement. She didn't love me enough to keep me. Like that, that was kind of, when I came out, we use this term, don't we? Yeah, coming out of the fog. That didn't hit me till I was 40, right? And um, and a, a bit later on, I as I've dissected it and looked back at it and, and, and realized that that was completely untrue. 
uh, I've I've come to see that as um, a, a belief. Yeah. So the, it it was a belief that I had. Yes. A coping mechanism as well. One would say, you know, we we use that to to comfort ourselves and say, okay, this is why I was given away. I wasn't loved enough. I wasn't wanted. And we kind of carry that throughout all of our journey. Uh, you know, I think even if you, even me reflecting back on my life, I try to, I guess people would say I'm an over overachiever. I try everything. And it's, it could be from the adopted self, that, uh, that, that, that image of the adopted self proving that you're worthy yeah it could be <laughs> it's a bit, it might not be it, it, it right it might not be it might be just that i hey i have a short time time on this earth and i really want to try everything <laughs> so but that's but yeah but that holding does it does uh i'm not blowing smoke up your derriere here Mr. Santini, all right. The, yeah. The, the, uh, there's a there's a there's a wisdom in in holding that belief lightly in a questioning way. Yeah. So it might be, or it might not be, rather than being dogmatic. You know. Yes. You you see this stuff, um, uh, classic, or you know, <laughs> people will say. Somebody said it to me. Um. Oh um, yeah, classic, uh, yeah, cl classic overachiever, classic um, uh, trying to fit in, adopted, classic people tree, uh, cheat, uh, um, yeah. people pleaser. They were talking about themselves, not 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 me. And I and I just thought, yeah, maybe, maybe not. But like, there's 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 genius in in like holding our beliefs a a, a little bit less. Let, holding on to them a little bit less yeah fast, yeah and 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 the, i've i've learned that after the fact right I, I i've learned that when when i i talk about this i don't know, talk, talk about it a lot but eight years after i had that thought that she didn't love me enough to to keep me um the woman that i, I was speaking to at the time was just like a coach lady she said, I don't think you're right, Simon. Yeah. And and um, rather than me saying to her, uh, how dare you invalidate what I've just said to you? <laughs> yeah. I said, oh, yeah, maybe you're right. Open. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Open to it, the it possibility. Wasn't, it, it wasn't, I wasn't, I was, I kind of opened. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. I've never had that. I've never had that thought before. I've mentioned it to you now. Yeah, it was all done done in 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 the um, in the moment, and I'm I'm really not trying to take uh, like an, I'm not I'm not trying to take responsibility for being a, a huge open guy, right? Sure. I, I'm just saying it how it feels to me. But but eight years later, after that, when I when I read the when I read the letter that that proved that the teddy bear was a um, a symbol of a love, not the yeah. consolation prize, I'd I trashed it as right. Yeah, yeah. And 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 I I and and the tears were kind of how could you have got it so wrong, Simon? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like this is that belief that you had was so far off the mark. Yeah. You were totally and utterly, I don't swear. I think as that. longer, I'm glad you figured that out because the probably the best thing I've ever said to my, always say is, I don't know. It'll, it absolves me from thinking that I'm intellectually have that much knowledge to, to, to have an answer. I say it a lot. I don't know. And it's true. If I don't, I don't know something. I'm open to the possibility that there's something else out there. Well, I, I don't have the answers. Yeah. And, 
and I like it that way because I don't, there are just too many possibilities in the world for, for one to think. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't know. Cause I, I'm not in their shoes. And as I told you before, if you were in their shoes, wow, what a decision has to be made. Yeah. Gut wrenching. I yeah. can't, even if it's for a minute, someone carried for nine months. Very hard, very hard to, to, to think about. And even from a male's perspective as the father, very, maybe in that moment, it didn't matter to them if they were callous enough to think that way. But boy, as you get, get a little bit more age, you start to wonder, I wonder what happened. At least that's how I go through life thinking about, you know. Yeah. The the thing that popped into my head when you said that the I don't know um sentence was it is is how um I I used to listen to driving to work I used to listen to uh um ra- radio four, right? I went so radio ones radio ones uh, BBC radio one is the pop pops pop um for young people, right? Pop channel. Then yeah. you got Radio 2, which is for more middle-aged people. Radio 3 is the classical channel. Radio 4 is news and current affairs, and it's for, for current. Okay. I went straight from Radio 1 to Radio 4. And and uh, on uh, at work, uh, at uh, dr- driving to, to work, because I was going the same time, I always I used to hear this slot all the time where the, the, uh, the reporter is trying to get the politician to say that they don't know. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. Or trying to um, get to the bottom of it, like a, a, a tenacious... Yes. Uh, go at them and they go at them and they go at them. And, and a politician is not allowed to say, I don't know. That That's correct. mean you don't know? You're, 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 you've got We a, voted for you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we voted for you. We voted for your party, uh, and you're saying you don't know. Well, if you don't know, what on earth are you going to do? You haven't got a clue. And and like we, it, it's not particularly social socially acceptable to say. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, it's not. But uh, and you will even at the very beginning think it's very odd to say something like that, but it is truly freeing. Ah. Uh, especially as a parent. I was asked questions a lot uh, from my kids growing up. And I, I didn't want to invent an answer that I had no answer to. That That's foolish. Yeah. You know, so it opened me up to saying, I don't know. I'm not lying. I'm not inventing something. I don't act like I'm superior to knowing this knowledge. I know that even, even as we were all the listeners on this podcast are probably going, yep, yeah, they know somebody who says that nonsense all the time and has no idea. <laughs> we all have people like that. And you go, oh, yeah, you're just inventing something. You're saying something just to seem like you're important. I, I'm thinking of uh, how in, unacceptable it is at school as well, right? It's like you haven't done your homework. <laughs> you know, you're going to get... Does. You, 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 so they ask you the question, and, and the teacher, uh, yeah, okay. So I'm I'm remembering a, a a particular example, right? So this is the first, like you know that in England we wear uniforms at, at school, right? Yes. So um, so we're eight, and we're uh, the the history teacher gets us to, in a lot to to stand in a circle in the in the classroom, um, and he asks. Uh, each one of us in turn, I think this is what, what happened in 1552? What happened in 1552, right? And he kept on going, right? And nobody knows. And he's making us feel like numpties. Do you know sure. what I mean? He made us feel like an idiot for doing that. Yeah. And then he says, look at the badge on your blazer. Right? So the blazer is yeah. the jacket and it's got the, the school coat of arms. Yeah. And it and it, it says something in Latin which I can't remember, and it says fifteen fifty two, and that was the year that the school was founded. Yeah, 
Now, I, we ain't ever going to forget that, right? No, because it was pointed out to you, but that's a that's a teaching moment. But when something's asked of you based on what perceived knowledge and you act like you know this, <sighs> you know, you were wrong. You did not know. And we all know people have said that, you know, they have no idea. They're just making it up to seem like they're knowledgeable and important. It's much more freer to freeing to say, I don't know. I'll, I'll have the answer for you or I'll look it up or something. But the discussion kind of ends at that point. Like, hey, what do you want me to do? <laughs> you know so uh, as it relates to us as as adoptees you know i think it's what are our feelings they're 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 all over the board they're going to be all over and i can't say that i know how everyone's feeling because I, I don't know either and uh but i do know that walk a walk a mile in someone else's shoes and you gain gain a better appreciation for it and that, and that's what I get, um, especially with talking to birth mothers, actually. Especially talking to birth mothers. Yeah. Uh, and uh, reading, listening to their books before I, um, if I have time, you know. Um, what, something's coming back to me, actually, is I, I came up with this one and I th- kind of think I've got the answer for it, but I'd love your take on it. So how can something that happened 56 years ago, right? So I'm 56 and whatever, four months away. How how can something that happened, i.e. this relinquishment, how can something that happened 56 years ago cause how I feel now? That's a psychological, I don't know. I think a psychologist could probably answer that one a lot better. You know, we're, we all have this. Where, where did we come from? What, what shaped our identity? It was all little things at an earlier age. Falling off a bike, running, falling. But it also gave us the ability to get back up and dust your feet off and keep going. I know we get beaten down with life. That's a fact. And we want to, we don't know how to bounce back. That's, That's a fact for all of us, whether adopted or not. And, uh, I do believe that we we are not that much more that I don't know. I don't I just think we're not that much different than anyone else in the fact that life beats us down, we wonder why we go back to figuring out what happened earlier, then we look for some traumatic. But you can also find the the overcoming, the achieving, the stick to itness because you wouldn't have gotten this far otherwise. I mean, there are many people that quit and stop. But something else tells you to not do that. It's not the television. It's not the radio that's telling you to do that. There's something else inside of you that told yourself, I fell down, I got back up. I'll keep going. Yeah. That's that's why life is just a, an, an absolute journey, you know. I don't I don't know what's gonna bring. It does take this belief system that things happen for a reason. Why is something in front of me? What am I supposed to gain from this? It happens for a reason to me. I, to my maybe it, like for example uh, you and i and having this relation this conversation this relationship is supposed to mean something else further down the road or to help one listener today with some unique different differing perspective but it was supposed to happen we were supposed to 
have this conversation. And um, so that's how I view it. Uh, but we all, myself included, man, we can all get negative really quick. Life, life is terrible. <laughs> we can also find that there's equally as good. It's just harder to find the good. We take that for granted. Yeah. Have you heard of a, an author called Sidney Banks? Sid Banks, I've come across that. No. So he was, um, he, he died for the uh, last 10 years or so. I'm not sure exactly. So he was, um, he was a Scottish welder. He was an adoptee, right? Um, and he was a, a Scottish welder. And he and he moved to, um, he worked in a he, he moved to Canada and he worked in a, a paper pulp mill, uh -huh. on uh, Salt Spring Island, which is kind of near Vancouver. Uh, and um, he 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 doesn't talk very much about. He never really talks a, a lot at all about being adopted. But um, he had a he had a, a big shift in his. In, in his his perspective um and uh he he reckoned he was going to change the uh, he, he was that that what he saw was kind of going to change the world and it, it's changed a little bit of the world um so he 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 discovered what's what um what he calls um what he called three three principles um and um so and there's People that it's it they're like um a lot a lot of traditional shrinks sure. took took this up um when they found that traditional shrinking didn't work uh and uh, and coachy coachy type people and I've read a few of his books but um he, he, his answer to the question why does something happen uh, why does something that happened in the past affect how we feel now is 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 what he would call the principle of thought so our thinking yeah. in the moment creates our feeling in the moment and and they're, they're like um two sides of the same coin that in that that you know that's sure the, i mean get asked a question today when you don't feel good your answer won't be won't be rosy yeah you know and that's why i those some of those interviews are skewed when they're trying to get a psychological uh, evaluation of like maybe your love language and well those questions are are to gather whether or not you are you know encouraged by uh touch or or words of affirmation, but it depends on the feeling you have at that particular moment when you're asked those questions. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, yeah. they're they're skewed. Yeah. Yeah. So I I concur there, man. You know, we so need I, to be in a good good state of mind to to go forth. <laughs> yeah, and and you can look um and, and you can look back. So you know, I I say this. I don't know if I said it on the actually on the an interview. Um, itself, but I do say it to uh, the adoptees. Uh, say, well, I um, the, the the teddy bear stuff started. Uh, it, it started my 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 journey of self discovery, or absolutely, or if I, if I'm in a good mood, or I, or I, or I call it a, a midlife crisis. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm in a bad mood, right? So, no question. It it, it, it it is all about the uh, the lens that we're currently. No, no question. Looking, it, looking through our, our our level of consciousness, and I think everybody that's listening will 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 totally agree on that. It is all about how how we feel in the moment. So, do yourselves a favor, you know, try to try to exercise and get all the good feelings that you possibly all the endorphins you can get out to build armor throughout the day. Yeah. Easier said than done, Simon. Indeed. <laughs> So uh, I'm conscious of time. Is there is there something that uh, that you'd like to share that I've not? Um... No, you know I, I I'm in the midst of of writing of of completing my book. Uh, you know on this on this journey of, of discovery that I had, and 
and uh once i'm once i'm completed that i'm it's it's just my own journey you know it's it's not for everyone and um uh, but i think people can take a bit of understanding knowing that it's a, a needle in a haystack don't quit keep going search what you will become from it will enrich your life if you're willing to hear you know positive and negative um but just having that end conclusion as some people do just wanting to have this relationship with a mother or a father and think it's all going to go rosy I, I can't say that that's going to happen you know so <laughs> but who you become along the way is a lot better and that's that's really about the the coach's perspective also the the, the teams that are there in the premier league where you're at, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to reach the, the pinnacle of winning the, the championship, but who you become along the way, that's what they remember that journey. There, there are a million games up that lead up to that. That's what they remember that. And that's what adoptees here on this podcast will remember just who, who you're going to become, what you're going to discover along this journey is going to enrich your life more than perhaps just knowing who your mom and dad were. Yeah. Cause you've got a book already, haven't you? I do, <laughs> but it wasn't, it wasn't based on this, you know, take your shot, make your play. It was more, more of a coach's perspective, you know, just never quitting, give, you know, keep going kind of thing. But this, this second one is, uh, is, is, is this, it's the story of, of, of that search for family, you know, so different. So uh, are you going to self-publish that? Are you going to, have you got a publisher or what's the I don't have a publisher yet. I would, I would love to have a publisher take a look at it. I just don't have the reason. I, I don't know anybody, to be honest. I mean, I, I would love someone to take a look at it because it's, it's my, it's a, it's just a different story. There, there are people, I was on a plane once and I told a short story of it, you know, segment to a, a 30 year old next to me and a 70 year old lady next to me and both start crying because they're coming from that same perspective of like, wow, that, that quest to go find somebody is uh, enormous. I myself loved to always hear those stories, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So if you or any of your, yeah. if your guests are, are no, no publisher, by all means, tell them, I would welcome them to review it. Thanks, buddy. Um, and uh, thank you, listeners. We will we will speak to you very soon. Um, yeah, just before I do that, actually, I'm, uh, we, uh, on Saturday, we did a, a webinar with an adopted mom who, who runs a publishing company. Oh, so, wonderful. Uh, it's called, it's called uh, Great, Grace Point Publishing, right? So Wonderful. Uh, I'm going to, there's a, I'm going to put a link in the show notes to the webinar we did. We did the webinar about um, about selling your book, but um, uh, she she would be a, a great lady to, uh, to 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 speak to. So um, sure, I'll I'll chat a little bit more after we finish this off. But uh, thank you very much, listeners. Thanks for for listening, and thank you to John. Um, I'm going to really remember the stick to itness, right? Stick to it. I, 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 I love that. Good. <laughs> Thank you, listeners. We'll speak to you very soon. Cheers. Bye Thank bye. you, everybody.